In this demonstration, we'll walk through the tools used to separate a tray of chicken breasts into discrete items, acquire the area of each chicken breast, identify the fatty surface regions, and finally calculate the surface to fat protein ratio. Now, after setting up these measurements in the GoCater, it'll take only 40 milliseconds to measure each cut of meat as it passes under the sensor. Now, if you're following along at home, we assume you're familiar with the GoCater software. So we'll be moving pretty quickly in GoCater Classic version 6.1 today. If this is your first time using the GoCater software, I recommend you sign up online at lmi3d.com for one of our introductory classes. First, let's review the scan page settings to ensure we're acquiring the necessary data for measurements. Now, this sample scan image was acquired using a G2450 Blue Laser Profile sensor. The two notable scan settings for this example application are part detection as well as acquire intensity. Now, without these two features, we would not be able to ratio the fat to protein at the end using the script. The example scan image here was taken in surface mode using a conveyor belt. As mentioned before, we assume this is something you know how to do. Uh, if not, please enroll in one of our fundamentals courses, uh, specifically the G2 Profile Fundamentals on LMI3D.com, and we'll get you sorted with that. Please ensure that acquired intensity is on if you, if you take a look at my screen here. This will pick up the contrast of the white surface fat and the darker meat. So you can see this in each of those frames. That's now being acquired. So we use part detection to portion out the chicken breasts. And to do this, first we will take a surface scan just to make sure that our exposure settings are good. And we will uh, also check the intensity. But the most important thing is to make sure we'll turn our scan to the side and take a look at our length, width, and the Z value of the lowest point. So here we make sure we got our scan good. With our intensity image on, we can tell the difference between the surface fat and the protein. And now if we turn it on its side, we're going to find the lowest point that we want to keep. And I'll just find it here. And if I use my cursor to hover over that lowest point of the chicken breast that I want to keep, that's about a Z value of 0 0.7, 0 0.8, uh, maybe about 1.1, let's call it that. So with that, I'm going to turn on my part detection. I'll lose my scan, but that's okay. Change my height threshold to 1.1. I've got threshold direction above. The chicken breasts are about three millimeters apart. I'll do a margin of error padding of about one. Minimum area is 100 millimeters, and the maximum part length, the length of one of the chicken breasts, is 300 millimeters. With all of that set, now I can turn on record and take my scan, and what should happen is, if I program this right, I should have two frames, because I've got two chicken breasts on my conveyor belt. And there we go. So the part detection has automatically portioned out or separated the chicken breasts into discrete objects. They're centered on the X and Y axes, and we are ready to start applying the measurement tools. Now, as a cautionary side note, if you need pick and place, selecting part as a frame of reference here nullifies the coordinates needed for pick and place application because it centers your target on the X and Y axes. So you will know your part detection settings are correct when you see the number of your recorded frames match the number of objects, or in this case, chicken breasts, you're expecting to be scanned. Now that we've finished our scan, we will be finding the length, width, and height of the individual food portions. In this case, let's go to the measure page and I'll show you the tool stack overview of what we'll be doing, then we'll delve into each of these. So if you take a look at my screen, you can see that the top uh, the top box there, that is our surface data output. That's what we'll be using to use for basis of all our measurements. Next, we have the surface bounding box advanced. Then we'll be using the surface volume tool, surface filter tool, surface blob, and finally the script tool. Let's go into detail of all of these. Let's jump into the surface bounding box advanced and we will use this one to report the basic dimensions of each individual cut of meat, just the basic length, width, and height. Uh, so we can use these measurements downstream for sorting or simply just put a pass fail on portions that are too small, too big, not the right size. So let's add that surface bounding box advanced. There we go. 
And in this example, we do not need to enable the region because part detection has already isolated the chicken breasts into separate discrete items. So that's nice and that's already done. What we do want to turn on is enable rotation to follow the rotation of each cut of meat. Uh, I know it's just drawing an arbitrary box around it, uh, an organic um, shape, but that's okay. Let's cycle through our recorded frames just to make sure that that follows rotation nicely. Finally, let's enable the percentile filter. So what that's going to do is that will just ignore, say, any debris or liquids on the, on the bottom there. So if I set the high percentile to 100, as that means that will go all the way to the top, I'll keep the low percentile at 1%. And just say, for example, if we did want to set a arbitrary pass fail, I'm going to turn on my width, my length, and my height. Uh, let's say we do not need the X center. So say for the length, if we wanted to set an arbitrary pass fail, again, that happens down in the decisions. If we wanted to make sure that nothing under uh, 190 millimeters is passed and nothing larger than 250 is passed. We will set those values and the, make sure that the length is highlighted if that's the one that you're setting the pass fail for. The second part is now we're going to find the area of the individual food portions. So the second measurement we'll be putting in place is the area using the surface volume tool. This one is pretty straightforward. Just add the surface volume tool. Uh, again, so we're going to use this output for our script. I will turn on the area measurement, turn off the volume measurement, and it's really as simple as that. Uh, now in this example, again, we don't need to enable region, part detection's on, so that we have these individually done. I'll turn that region off. Some of you might have noticed that we could have calculated the rough area using the length and width measurements from the surface bounding box advanced tool, uh, since we're going to be using the script tool anyway. However, the area measurement in the surface volume tool is much more accurate and advanced. You can see that there is no box drawn around it and it's only selecting the data points. So it's not taking that, that giant area. Do use this if you're planning to measure an area. Next step, we will identify the surface fat areas. So the next tool we'll use is the surface filter tool to identify the fatty surface areas on the chicken breasts. We will add the surface filter tool. Now, we will enable use intensity to make use of that intensity scan data. Remember that black and white that help us find the fat versus the protein? And the filter we'll be using here is the binarize. So let's use that. We want to select the use intensity, check that box right there, and the filter type is binarize. With our threshold, uh, let's take a look at what the output data looks like. First, right now we're highlighted on the processing time. So if you just see where my cursor is, click on the data tab and the filtered surface to view what that looks like. So that's where if you take a look at my screen, I'm zooming in here, it is with our threshold of 128, it's only taking up finding a little bit of that fat. So that's not quite right. Uh, I do know from this application, my threshold is only going to be at about 60. And what that's going to do is that is going to highlight all of those fatty areas. And I'll just show, do a little back and forth. We can see the intensity view here. We have all that fat, and if I go again to the filtered surface there, you can see that matches quite well. So for the filter tool, I've adjusted the threshold value, and so it, how do you know that this is 60? Well, uh, you just have to adjust the threshold value until you've accurately highlighted the fatty areas on the surface of the chicken breast. Um, in this example, again, threshold of 60 or 65 pixels works quite well. Uh, just make sure you view all your recorded frames to ensure your thresholds value threshold values accurately highlight the fatty areas and if you are doing this by yourself in your own application just like you saw flip between your scanned intensity data and the binarized image to make sure you're highlighting what you want to highlight this is where the flexibility comes in 
So the next step is to separate the surface area of the fatty parts we've just highlighted using the surface filter tool. And we're going to do that by adding the surface blob tool. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. We have the surface blob tool. So the first thing I need to do in the surface blob tool is change the stream to the surface filter output using the filtered data in the blob tool. I'm going to change that. That's going to give us that black and white filtered image that we just created. So the blob tool will be able to make use of that intensity data and we've adjusted that intensity data. So the thresh, we're going to adjust the threshold to let's say 200 because again we know that it's either going to be either a zero or a 255. So if we step back to that surface filter tool and we hover over top, we can see that what we've created using the binarized uh, filter is if you hover over that white fatty area, that has an intensity of 255. Hovering over the protein gives you an intensity of zero because we've manipulated the image. Say if we go to the edges, it's anywhere from, what are we looking at? I'm trying to get a, an edge here somewhere. Uh, 176 flew by real quick, maybe an 80 or a 60. But really it's going to be one or the other. So going back to the surface blob tool, knowing that we're going to use the intensity, if you see where my cursor is here, turn on use intensity, you can see those blobs are starting to take shape. Now we don't need to use the null points, we can get rid of that. So we will either be, so we're going to ignore anything down at the zero and we want anything, let's call it 200 and above. You see the blobs haven't really changed a whole lot. We want threshold direction. We're going to be only choosing anything above an intensity of 200. Uh, let's adjust our open kernel on X and Y to five just a little bit. We'll leave the closed kernel there. Uh, we will want both external and internal blobs. And let's use the area filter. So our max area looking at this, we can see that right now we're not quite capturing these big fatty areas, so we need to adjust our max area to include that. So let's put that up, uh, let's over uh, overestimate that. Let's go to 10,000. Now that's, you can see that's starting to include those large fatty areas and our minimum area, let's say let's only identify areas that are two millimeters squared and over. So now we've got our thresholds there Let's go to a top-down view, and that should, those blue blobs should encapsulate those fatty areas pretty nicely. Now, the last thing we want to do, if you just, again, take a look at my screen here, uh, we'll leave the area or the ordering from large to small. That's just fine, but the number of blob outputs, let's bring that up to five. So by doing that, uh, we don't want too many blob outputs just because it'll slow down processing, but also in real life, this were on the factory floor, we don't want a hundred different blob areas to cut. We probably only want five and uh, that'll just make sorting this much easier. Finally, in the measurements panel, turn on area one, two, three, four, five, because we created five blobs or five areas. Uh, you'll have to scroll down to enable them. So here is where we have our area number one area number two, and you can see those being highlighted as I do that. And the reason we're turning these on is because we need to use these outputs in the script tool later to make that ratio calculation. All right, we are ready to add the script tool. The script tool is always way down the bottom there. So I just added the script tool. This is our default script. I've cheated a little bit. Again, we have our script pre-made here that I did before, just so you're not seeing me struggle. Let's add that in, save, and let's break down what's happening here. So the top where the tool names and the measurement names are, these aren't particularly needed. This is more for demonstration purposes, just to clarify what we're calling all these different things. So we have our surface volume, surface volume, surface blob, surface blob. Uh, and here's where we just want to clarify that our 
area and we also have our area blobs, which is what we did in the surface blob tool where we have that area one, two, three, four, five. So let's break down that process. First, we're making something called area fat, where we're initializing the variable to store the fatty area, and we will sum up, um, basically sum up all the surface blob and those areas created by the surface blob tool. Here's where we will ratio that out. We have what we created, that surface fat, and we have our surface volume and our area, and all of that's being calculated to find that ratio. Finally, we are setting a pass-fail on that ratio. So we're telling it anything with a ratio greater of 0.7 is going to be a fail. There's too much fat, we don't want it. Or a ratio of under 0.7, that's good. So let's go back and let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, here we have our, let's go with serve. there we go. So we have our 3D height map. So in frame number three, that's showing a ratio output of 0.163 and that one's going to pass. This one has a lot of fat here. That's a ratio of 0.95, that is a fail. And that is a ratio of 0.46 and that one is a pass. There we go. Please note that this walkthrough is a simplified application made to apply to as many situations as possible. Now your application will undoubtedly have more conditions, for example, inspecting more intricate cuts of meat. Uh, now this might require an AI solution as demonstrated in our Factory Smart AI Solutions video online. You can see it on our LMI YouTube channel or just reach out to us at LMI Technology to help you solve the specifics of your applications just by contacting us at sales at lmi3d.com. Thank you for watching.